Hello boys and girls, Alex here. Welcome to my uh, unboxing of my Ryobi cordless air compressor. There you have it, it's unboxed. It's got bugger all in it so there's no unboxing. The only hassle I had was trying to pull the bloody thing out of the box because of the polystyrene packing. It comes with nothing, hang on. I've been a bit premature, I've attached the battery. It's got a Nitto outlet on one side, a release valve on the other side, battery port on off switch, and underneath the all important drain hose, which I can guarantee you that 99% of the people, all right, 98 percent of the people that own an air compressor we're lucky to know where it is even if, if they if they have used it well if they haven't used it anyway most of them just don't use it you forget about it basically a compressor should theoretically be drained after every use however I think you're doing yourself a great disservice if you don't drain it at least once a month or once every six months, even with limited use. With this it's got two dials, a dial here that'll tell you the air pressure and a dial here that'll give you the pressure that you're going to output. I work in PSI, no idea what all the other bloody dials are, so use your own thing. It's got here a little picture of a tank which is this and a spray gun in there which is the outlet which is a load of bullshit because the spray gun is just about useless except for Christ I could fart better than you'll get out of this so this is not selling it as a sprayer to plug the battery in simple thing turn it on whoa I had it on switch it takes about a minute and a half to charge up to 120 psi and it doesn't take long for this one gallon empty tank to drop down to about 80 psi where the battery kicks in again. Secondly, have a decent supply of batteries because uh, unless all your seals are perfect that battery is going to drain and drain fast. In fact I think this has got one bar left on it, so I might go and swap it over for another one while I recharge this. I've got another battery that's fully charged. And look, I'm going to crap on it a little bit before I start getting into the nitty gritty of the compressor. While I always want to make a short video, I never do. It always drags out because I crap on and being unrehearsed, it always does crap on. And I hate re-edit. Well, I do edit at times to correct some of the stuff ups I make. But because I talk throughout the video, it's hard to fast forward and cut things out. So, in the text of the um, YouTube video, I'll put on there maybe some of the quick forward to things. And we'll do maybe that with what you need. Anyway... I've got a large compressor, well it's not a big compressor, a fair size one that's hidden in the corner of my workshop back there somewhere and uh, it's a bastard to move around um, and occasionally I need to do work outside to the extent that I bought a small compressor for upstairs. Nevertheless I found that uh, I do everything else about. What most people might do is, uh, uh, well, I rather than thinking of downsizing a compressor to move around, I decided to convert everything from air to battery operated. Now, I used to have a very good Plaslod nail gun and uh, I invested in this thing here. Now, as you can see, it's bloody shiny as hell. It's, it's fairly old now. It's about five or six years old. Quite shiny because I hardly ever need to use it. 
the odd times, the odd times I wanted to use it, I couldn't be bothered dragging the compressor out. This was also before I bought the other small one for upstairs. I went out, bought the gun, used it a few times, and most of the time it just sits in its box, and that's it, which is a bloody shame. Same thing with a lot of my other air tools like uh, guns, ratchets, etc. I've gone battery operated, that's why I've got a shitload of uh, Ryobi cordless. And that's why I didn't hesitate in buying this, only because I had enough batteries to suit it. But I then found that one of my main uses for the large nailing, nailing of, uh, where, where the hell did I put them? Um, here we are, these size nails. I needed something better. So, I invested in one of these little things and I don't know whether you've seen my other videos. Look, I'll, I'll give a, diff, a little demo of this only because you can see how this unit uses it. However, that still had the problem of having to drag the compressor around or have, you know, extra long lengths of cord and hose and all that which to me is just inconvenient and I hate inconvenience. So, stupid me, probably I get a bigger pension check, although it's self-funded so I can't thank the government for that. But then again, I did work my ass off for it. Um, it's not a generous pension, but it'll let me get a few things that I don't really absolutely need. Anyway, I bought this thing to replace this unit here, battery operated. By the time you add the battery, it's too bulky and you just can't get into the areas that I needed that to get into. So that in itself was a bit of a, well, waste, well, sort of like an unnecessary waste of money. You know, it's, uh, I've used it, but again, I, this is another tool I have definitely not justified the cost for other than the fact that it has saved me a lot of heartache trying to work around. Um, if you measure heartache and time, yeah, it might have uh, paid for itself, but only for that reason. All right, so let's get back to this little unit here. I thought, holy hell, will it drive this? Now, and I still need this because I've got balustrades upstairs that are, God knows, about... Uh, 40, 50 years old and planks are falling off left, right and centre. I can't get the cordless nail gun in there to hammer on. I could, but it makes a dog's breakfast of it. Because uh, you've only got about that much gap to get in there. While you can drive in the nail sideways, that's going to push everything sideways. Ideally, I want to come in from the top at an angle, which this will do. And it has done. Anyway... I thought to myself, well, bugger it, why not get that? Then when I watched the video, I noticed that in the uh, Ryobi advertising splurge, they were using air guns. Now, I do use it, happen to use an air gun. I've got a reasonable little set here. Um, these were to paint my, a lot of my remote control models and all that. And another one, this is an El Chip, and this is actually quite an expensive set. Although it's mainly expensive because of all the different nozzles it's got for different spray patterns and units there. However, I used to use for that this little electric compressor, which, uh, look, it served its purpose. And there is no way known I would buy this to replace this. That's ridiculous. This is better, it's more compact gives you a continual flow, which was, I'll mention around with that. So, no way known would I buy that to replace this. However, now that I have got it, I'd much rather... Well, no, I wouldn't. No, that's bullshit. I, I'm, this is just as comfortable in the workshop as upstairs. In fact, it's more comfortable than I'll get into later. It's got a... Uh, they call that a 1 8 inch coupler, uh, one eight inch 
BSP or whatever it is coupler. Now, however, the reason why I do mention this and air hose airbrushes is that if you don't happen to have one and you ever thought of doing airbrushing and your only alternative was a compressor, well, hey, this might do the trick so you can actually take it inside the house and do airbrushing at the kitchen table. Much to the delight of the missus, I'm sure. Anyway, let's put that aside. Let's do the realistic thing. Rather than go all hog with everything, naturally, I finished up buying a uh, one of these El Cheapo hoses. However, its length was far too long for what I... I want this for a, to carry the compressor with me to the job, not a long hose. So I finished up cutting it in half. Um, so if I need a long hose for this, I've got that together. Cut it in half. Actually, it's funny because the bloody connectors that I had to buy so you can then cut, uh, do it up probably cost more than the bloody hose. The hose is quite... Cheap the connectors because I go for the good connectors, not the shitty ones. The good ones are basically where you can push that on and it automatically locks in. The shitty ones, you've got to pull that back and put it on. That's what this had on it, and I didn't particularly want to try reaching around the back to put it on. So I've got this hose that you can then just click and remove. Anyway. Basically, nitto fitting, put it in. And now, look, I'm going to turn the camera off because this will take about, as I said, a minute and a half to um, recharge up to whatever it takes. And it's not so much... It is noisy, much noisier than you would like. It is noisy, a hell of a lot noisier than that little thing here, which you can't hear. In fact, um, look, let's plug that in. And you might hear, or not hear, how noisy it is. As you can hear, it's bugger all compared to this. Anyway, that's not the point. If you want to pay a couple of hundred bucks for that, just for a one-show pony, well, this is a two-show pony. <laughs> you, you, you have the choice. Anyway, as I said, I'll turn it on. And look, it's going to run out of air very quickly when I do demos. And you'll hear the noise of it recharging. So I'll be back soon. Okay, the battery has charged. You might be able to see it. It's on uh, 120 PSI. That's set at 100 PSI. You can change that by this knob here. You pull out the lock button. Pull out the lock button, come on. And then you can turn it down or turn it up to whatever you want there. Push the button in to stop inadvertent moving. Now here we go, you'll, I've got this compressed air and you'll see how quickly it'll go and note this coupling is a bit dicky because you know it's a on the fly coupling so it will deplete quick too but here we go. Back again, bit of a stupid exercise because uh, when I switched it on it was nearly recharged and I only saved about three seconds of film. However, while I had the camera off I was m massing a few other things to include in the video and this is a poor connection so it leaked and it cut in just as I was about to re-filming. Anyway, as I demonstrated this is only really good for just short bursts, otherwise use the battery operated one. However, I did find I had this uh, Brad Naylor left over. Um, I had a swag of these. I've, I've actually got a cordless one of these. But I had about two or three of these and I gave most of them away. 
This just happened to be sitting on top of a wood pile that I forgot about. That's why I've still got it. And I thought, well, damn it, I might just see how well it does work. Now, I've got, what, 30 mil or whatever brads in there. And we'll see how many it'll put in before it gives up the ghost. Although it's dropped about 2 or 3 PSI, that might sacrifice one or two nails. Okay, I've got a piece of wood, bugger it. Um, I did try and super glue it because I wanted some thickness so I can make a thicker demo. But looks like we'll have to see what happens otherwise, bugger it. Slap this on and then let's see how many we can get in. Hang on, I hope we're in the viewfinder. One. can see it's uh, put in quite a few I'll dismantle it just in case no there you go. it's not leaking um, it cut in very quickly but as you can see it's put in all those fairly continuously put them into a reasonable depth I haven't adjusted the depth on that to a reasonable depth um, these were C1 brads by the way 30 mil and it kept up uh, although it kept dropping back down to below whatever it was, the recharging uh, PSI level, it did keep up enough pressure to keep driving the brads. Now, maybe I could have done this all along. Again, it's not something that would ever consider replacing a main compressor, but if you happen to be using little brads just to cheat your woodworking or whatever hell that's a beautiful little thing to do rather than drag out cords now what I'm going to try and do is check out the brad nailer when I say check it out I've checked it out um, unfortunately I'm I'm one of these cheap bastards well cheap bastard to the extent that I hate wasting unnecessarily and I haven't got any thick timber to try and drive these nails through and uh, because what I had was gone. So what I'm going to do is cut that bit off there. I did try and super glue that, but the super glue didn't hold. There you go, what a cheap bastard. So what I might do is clamp that to the table, only because I don't particularly want to risk my fingers. Who knows what might happen. So I clamp this to the table. Should be okay. Hang on, can we see everything? Just. All right, let's move it over a bit. Slap on, hang on, I'll get a nail ready. Slap on the palm nailer part of it. Now, that's magnetic head. So I put that on there. Slap that onto the piece of wood and here we go. once more as I said I'm surprised because in previous tests it went through without any hassles
this has really got me stumped as to why it's not going in but uh, look I'll try a little bit of pine I'm going to hang it over the edge I don't want to hammer into the other thing see if I can drive it in straight Um, I bet all that installed you all with bloody confidence. Well, what I found that as I was driving the nail in, there was leakage out of the hose faster than it should. Um, as I said previously, um, I did manage to drive this into a fairly thick piece of... Uh, um, I'm guessing it's it was probably still treated pine but sort of like gardening landscaping gray type of treated treated pine and uh, it went through without any problems maybe it doesn't like this tabletop look I might even move it to somewhere else where I did test it and see if it works any better one good thing about this it was easier to move than the compressor I did manage to drive it in before it started recharge however I did blow out so look maybe it's not ideal for that or you've got to take it in stages but it's an option you be the judge don't shoot the messenger I'm just demonstrating what I found as I said that other timber I found it okay this is only point I'm surprised but then again having said that the thing that has surprised me is the fact that the nails keep bending and even when I tried to finish driving it home with the hammer it took a bit of effort so I don't know maybe uh, it's I don't know I don't know I, I can't say anything more all right now the next good god I'm getting feeling embarrassed the next next thing I wanted to address is airbrushing now I had this uh, airbrush kit that was designed to screw onto those cans of spray it's got a 1 8 inch not a 1 8 it's their, their, their measurements are all fucked that's all I can say it's got a M4 thread on there which is totally different to every other thing so I had to somehow excuse me adapt that to the compressor well it also had this other thread on it which is a quarter inch anyway I have managed with that to be able to now this is going to be crazy because as soon as I plug it in it's going to drain I'll switch that off as you can see but I have managed I have managed to connect that to it the other problem was connecting the typical standard quarter inch that has a half inch on the end with that again airbrush screws on there and as I say this quarter inch I mean why the hell they call that quarter inch I mean the bloody things nearly a half an inch in diameter but they call that a quarter inch no, an eighth inch I should say, an eighth inch. That plug there they call the quarter inch plug. Anyway, this again just plugs in and uh, that's it. So, based on this, this and this, look, you, you be the judge. Um, 
all the problems I've just suddenly had you'll never see on a Ryobi ad but they can be overcome as I said this now makes it portable and usable though um, well in this demo um, I've never actually used this outside yet not in this configuration um, in this demo I've managed to drive it home eventually I haven't got enough proper timber as I said the timber I used previously was big and I've thrown it out and bugger it you know for the sake of uh, the demo I'm just not not prepared to sacrifice good timber um, and I'm sorry but if you don't like that then send me some and I'll make you a video using it um, but uh, look it's a I find it's a handy little portable don't expect miracles um, you know with regards to a uh, uh, a proper framing gun it might drive in one nail then you've got to recharge it but you know Jesus Christ if you want to build a house with this compressor you better have a thousand uh, batteries and uh, half a thousand battery charges so you can then just continually keep swapping them over um, as you can see this does the trick um, although it, it has driven at home although as I said it went off centre um, and yeah I, I just I, I can't say any more you have it now there warts and all um, you be the judge but I can guarantee you some of the stuff ups you've seen here um, you won't see on the Ryobi promo video that's it keep safe boys and girls and catch you on the next idiotic idea I have for making a video of Hello. okay one more time to try and save face first time I tried it I took it off, off camera and I tried it on this packing crate bit of timber I don't know where I got it from but it happened first time then I tried to take a video of it forgot to take, turn the camera on third time I tried it I ran out of juice the battery went so you can see with what little demo I've done it drained a full 5 amp hour IAB battery so I'm going to try once more for the final time I'm going to leave that previous one there see if I can get one in now and redo that and see where we go that one went in there you have it it did drive the first one in straight away uh, well straight away with one go it tried the second one but then it cut in and I didn't want to pursue it then as you can see I did then uh, while it was still charging finish at home so it looks like look it'll pop in one of these without too much trouble the only problem is while it's now going on the second one it won't make two and then it goes into charge mode um, and ideally you should stop rather than persevere but either way um, it's good other nice thing about it is it's oilless so you don't have to worry about that um, and anyway hopefully I've saved a little bit of face um, to the extent that yes it will go through We'll, dr we'll drive through at least one of these using the pile nailer even though you might have to consider the type of wood you're dr drilling, driving into however if it's thick wood you can do it but the chances are with the pile nailer not thick wood, hard wood with this pile nailer you're more likely to bend the nail before you even get close to getting it through alright boys and girls hopefully this time this is it and I'll see if I can edit this in somewhere with that boring you shitless with all the other failures. Err, keep safe. Of course as always I've got to come back. Shit.
Anybody out there want a uh, one of these things? Because damned if I'm going to use it when I've got a uh, um, where the hell is it? Um, a cordless one. All right. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, you just can't get enough of me, can you? Um, one of the things I did forget to mention is during the processing, I did, when I was letting out some air, I did notice a little bit of moisture come out of here. I did try and drain this, however, there wasn't enough to spray it. There wasn't enough to spray out, so, uh, um, yeah. But the point I'm getting at is, again, reminding everyone that if you do get a compressor, or if you do own a compressor, don't forget to bleed it. Uh, this time, maybe.